How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for endocrine physiology for step one. Nearly identical question shows up on the USMLA. Okay. 34 year old woman. She's got an eight month history of increasing fatigue and irregular menses. She describes her mood as low and has had decreased recent interest in social activities. Vitals are she has bradycardia here, heart rate of 55, BMI 26, serum total cholesterol 300, should be under 200, hepatic AST elevated, creatine kinase elevated. She's commenced on exogenous triadothyronine, which is T3. Question wants to know which of the following combinations of the serum findings most likely to be seen following administration. Now, I sort of did something unusual here where I gave a pretty difficult vignette of hypothyroidism, most likely just Hashimoto. And rather than having you guess the diagnosis or something related to it, I essentially handed it to you by telling you we're giving uh, exogenous thyroid hormone anyway. But I did this because you should know, watching this clip, some of the extremely high yield findings for hypothyroidism in USMLE that students often miss. So first of all, they are often not going to tell you cold intolerance, brittle hair, dry skin, okay, constipation. Those findings are too easy. They're often omitted. What you do need to know is irregular menses, okay, and extremely important that you're aware of that. Dysthymia, depression, okay, can be seen with hypothyroidism. Bradycardia, you say, well, can't patients normally, can't people just normally have a heart rate of 55? Okay, sure, not a big deal, but as per my observation, the NBME exams, they like to do this. So if you're not 100% sure and then you see the heart rate and it's like 55, 60, that can be corroborating slash supportive of hypothyroidism. BMI, does, it, although 26 is technically overweight, doesn't have to be exceedingly high. You don't have to have an obese patient. Total cholesterol elevated 300, okay, should be under 200. I've seen this on NBME questions. You say, well, what the hell is going on with the AST being elevated? I know it sounds a little bit weird, right? But if you've been following my content, I've talked about this before. You can have transaminitis with thyroid dysfunction, okay, AST and or ALT. But I've seen an NBME question on one of the two CK forms where they gave AST elevated. You're like, what the fuck? It's not a big deal, okay? So transaminitis, as I said, creatine kinase. You can get hypothyroid myopathy. So you don't have to have proximal muscle weakness per se. They don't have to say that any. A pain. They don't have to give you those findings, but creatine kinase can be elevated, all right? So we're commenced on exogenous T3. Thyroxin, in contrast, would be T4. So question wants to know which following most likely be seen following the administration. So let's just look at the answer choice here. Clear, let's start with the left column. Makes sense. So T3 is going to be up. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you're administering T3 exogenously, then serum levels of T3 are going to be elevated. So we're only looking at these top four answer choices here. Now let's look at TSH. So if we give T3, that's going to induce negative feedback at the hypothalamus anterior pituitary. So we're going to shut off TRH. We're going to shut off TSH, negative feedback. Makes sense? Not difficult. So TSH is going to be decreased. So we're looking at either choice B here or, or we're looking at choice D. Now this is where the question gets difficult, where uh, some of you guys will have fucked up. T4 is decreased. Holy shit. It's not increased. The reason for this is because, and this is the sentence I want you to memorize, is T4 is converted to T3, but T3 is not converted to T4. Okay. So if we're giving T3, it's up arrow, obviously. We induce negative feedback. TSH is low. And therefore, we're shutting off endogenous production of thyroid hormone. So if, if we're shutting off endogenous production of T3, it doesn't fucking matter because we're administering it anyway, but we're also shutting off endogenous production of T4. So we have no way to get T4 because T3 is not converted to T4. So holy shit, it's a down arrow for T4. OMG. However, in contrast, choice B would be the correct answer if we were administering exogenous levothyroxine. T4, okay? Because if we give T4, obviously T4 is going to be an up arrow, and that would be converted to T3 peripherally. So T3 would also be high. And of course, that's going to induce negative feedback. TSH is a down arrow. So I'd say your two high yield points of consolidation here. Number one, T4 can be converted to T3. T3 is not converted to T4. So choice D here, up arrow, T3, down arrow, T4, down arrow, TSH is what you're going to have for exogenous T3. In contrast, for exogenous T4, up arrow, T3, up arrow, T4, down arrow, TSH. Your second point is 
I want you to be aware of the findings in this vignette that outside of very buzzy past level uh, findings, such as constipation, brittle hair, dry skin, cold intolerance, as I mentioned before, you should also be aware of menstrual irregularities, dysthymia, depression, apathy, bradycardia, increased total cholesterol, transamiditis, and hypothyroid myopathy with increased CK. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.